In the previous module, we have stated different properties of continuous time Fourier transform. The equations for continuous time Fourier transforms are shown on the screen. The equation on the left is called as the synthesis equation, whereas the equation on the right is called as the analysis equation. Now, in order to exist this continuous time Fourier transform, these integrals in both the analysis and the synthesis equations must converge otherwise the Fourier transform would not exist so the conditions for the convergence of these integrals are similar to what we have seen for the continuous time Fourier series if we recapitulate that the conditions that were for the convergence for the Fourier series were known as the Dirichlet conditions. Similar he, similarly here, the conditions for the existence, so I would say the conditions for the convergence, so convergence of this integral, so convergence conditions. As we have seen for the Fourier series, the first condition that we have mentioned was that the signal here that is x of t, the signal under consideration that is x of t must be absolutely integrable. So must be absolutely integrable. That means the integral from minus infinite to infinite mod of x of t dt must be less than infinite. This was the very first condition that we named as Dirichlet conditions. Second condition is that this x of t must have finite number of finite discontinuities finite number of finite discontinuities what does this mean is that it must have a finite number, the countable number of discontinuities and each of those discontinuities must be finite in nature. The third condition that the Dirichlet gave was that this x of t must have finite number of maximas and minimas that too within a short span you take any interval of time for x of t there must be a finite number of maximas and minimas so within any finite interval Now, these were the conditions that we have already seen for the continuous time Fourier series. So, the similar conditions must also be satisfied for the existence of Fourier transform. You should note that these are the sufficient conditions, meaning if a certain signal x of t satisfies all of these three conditions, it is guaranteed to have its Fourier transform. However, there may be some signals that may not satisfy these conditions but still may have Fourier transform.
so these conditions these three conditions are sufficient conditions but not necessary conditions so i would state that these are sufficient conditions for the existence of fourier transforms that actually guarantees the existence of fourier transform but not necessary not necessary means they may exist some other signals which may not satisfy these conditions but may have the fourier transform so we are going to see such signals in this module now having known these conditions let's have a look at some special cases for the existence of fourier transform let's take a very simple signal so the first signal that we are going to consider is the unit impulse signal unit impulse signal or what is called as a dirac delta function unit impulse now we have already in introduced this signal in the initial modules of this course so let me quickly recapitulate what this unit impulse is the unit impulse is indicated by del of t this signal actually tend towards infinite when t tend towards zero this del of t is actually zero when t is not equals to zero so in short and also this integral over this delta function dt is 1 so the area under this unit impulse that is indicated by del of t is 1 so this signal can be indicated something like this so we have this axis and the signal here indicated in green is the unit impulse signal so we have here uh, the t the time axis and this is del of t you can see that otherwise the signal is zero except at t equals to zero let's try to find out the Fourier transform of this signal now if we go by the equation so we draw a line here the Fourier transform equation is given by capital X of Omega equals to integral from minus infinite to infinite x of t e power minus j omega t dt now this x of t here the signal under consideration here x of t is del of t so we are trying to find out the signal x of t that is del of t's Fourier transform so if we try to do that we are going to get equals to integral from minus infinite to infinite del of t e power minus j omega t dt you can see that this is simply a multiplication of certain signal with del of t and you know from the property of del of t that is the unit impulse that if we multiply any signal with del of t we are going to get del of t being scaled by the value of this signal at t equals to zero 
what I mean to say here is that we can use this property that when any signal x of t is getting multiplied with del of t we are going to get x of 0 del of t same property we can apply here and we are going to get from minus infinite to infinite del of t multiplied by e power 0 dt so that is going to be integral from minus infinite to infinite del of t dt and that is equals to 1 this means that the Fourier transform of an unit impulse function is 1 so let me state that here the del of t is going to have the Fourier transform so I'll indicate that with f equals to 1 or you can also indicate this as something like this we're going to have this del of t whose Fourier transform being equals to 1 so both means both are different representation of the notation for representing the Fourier transform pair this is one and the same thing so now we know what is the Fourier transform of an impulse function so a unit impulse function will have the Fourier transform equals to 1 what it means is that it is going to have the same magnitude the equal magnitude that means a constant magnitude of 1 all over the frequency axis so that would look something like this the axis would be something like this so if this is the frequency axis if I draw the frequency axis the signal is going to be something like this that is 1 and let this axis be omega so this is going to be the signal that is x of omega let's have a look at some different signals for your transforms next signal that we are going to consider is let's try to find out the Fourier transform of a constant now, as we have seen a few minutes back that the existence of Fourier transform the conditions that must be satisfied by a signal in order for its existence its Fourier transform existence the conditions that we have seen as we stated were called as the sufficient conditions meaning the signal if, if it satisfies all of these conditions it may have the Fourier transform it is guaranteed to have a Fourier transform however as I said there may be some signals that may not satisfy these properties but may have the Fourier transform and a constant signal is one among those see that a constant signal so let that constant be let's suppose a a constant signal looks something like this so if I try to plot this constant signal it is going to look something like this so we have this constant of amplitude let's suppose a and this is the time axis this is the signal under consideration that is x of t which is constant all our time now let's try to calculate the Fourier transform of the signal now according to the conditions that we have stated this signal 
is not absolutely integrable so the condition the dirichlet condition is not satisfied but still we can find the fourier transform of this constant signal let us see how we can do that now in order to calculate the fourier transform let's begin with the equation of fourier transform the fourier transform equation x of omega is given by integral from minus infinite to infinite x of t e power minus j omega t dt and this x of t is nothing but a constant signal that is a so this is going to be equals to a being constant can write it as a times e power minus j omega t dt and that is going to be a being constant i can take it outside from minus infinite to infinite e power minus j omega t dt now this i can represent in a different form something like this now what i'm doing here is that i'm representing this equation in a different form so a being there i'll make some adjustments of let's suppose 2 pi here so i'll multiply this equation by 2 pi and divide it by 2 pi so that is not going to make any change in the equation and we are going to get the equation something like this e power minus j omega t dt you can see that a simple adjustment that i have done is i have multiplied and divided by 2 pi i will come to know why i am doing that now this equals to a 2 pi i will written as it is and this one upon 2 pi integral from minus infinite to infinite what i will do here is i'll make this as minus omega times t dt now have a look at this equation this equation is simply the equation for the inverse Fourier transform if you remember that the Fourier transform equation you can see that this is the synthesis equation given by 1 upon 2 pi integration from minus infinite to infinite x of omega e power j omega t d omega now you can see that from here instead of omega I'm having t here and instead of t I'm having omega so for convenience I'll write the equation again so the equation for the inverse Fourier transform is given by we know x of t is given by 1 upon 2 pi integral from minus infinite to infinite x of omega e power j omega t d omega now you can compare this equation with the one which we have obtained it here now here you can see that instead of t we have omega instead of omega we have t and this x of omega is 1 here that means a Fourier transform is given by 1 now what is the signal that has Fourier transform as 1 we have already seen that just just a few minutes back delta function is having the Fourier transform as 1 this indicates that here the Fourier transform is 1 that means there should be a delta function in its inverse as this equation in the braces represents the inverse Fourier transform inverse Fourier transform of 1 that means 
the inverse Fourier transform would indicate or would have a delta function there. Now we should be careful here because the variable that we are using here is t instead of omega. So as we should we expect the delta function in time here, we should expect the delta function in omega. And there is a change here instead of instead of omega we have minus omega here. That means at the end we should get equals to a times 2 pi del of minus omega and you know that this delta function the property of delta function is that if this del t is equals to del of minus t this being symmetric that means this is equals to a 2 pi del of omega now this is the Fourier transform of a constant as you can see that this in this involves the term that is the impulse function here. So let me quote this in brackets that a Fourier transform of a constant let's suppose A is equals to A times 2 pi del omega or we can indicate that in a different way as we have done before that the constant constant would have the Fourier transform so I'll write it here I'll make some space here so this constant is having the Fourier transform as 2 pi a or a 2 pi del omega This is the Fourier transform. We are going to see some more functions which do not satisfy the Dirichlet conditions but may have the Fourier transforms. We are going to see more such functions in the next module. See you then.